All right, hello everybody. I am gonna be going live with Angela with Boomer and Beyond Wellness. I'm just going to add her in as a collaborator. All right, so I see that she joined. Oh, perfect. Oh, you're a man. <laughs> see, that was easy. Oh my God, you had no clue. I just was like, please, dear Lord, just get me in there. Just get me on. <laughs> oh my gosh, it was, your prayers were answered. I'm so excited that you're here with us today. Well, thank you for having me. Oh, I'm so excited. So, I just want to start by saying when I think of somebody who just embodies the plant-based lifestyle, who has so much energy because of it, who just has so much vitality because of it, I honestly think of you. You just are so wonderful, such a wonderful human. And I know you have so much to offer and to tell us today. So I want to leave the floor to you just to start with telling us a little bit about yourself and kind of what brought you to your journey of really digging deep into the plant-based lifestyle and wanting to share this message message with people. Well, first off, thank you so much for that very lovely introduction. I really appreciate it. And I have to say back to you that you know that I'm on a mission with some of you younger gals <laughs> in the whole food plant exclusive diet and lifestyle community. And um, I just think that yours is an incredibly important voice for the present, but also to take this movement into the future, Dr. Stephanie. It is you and it's Stacy Heine and Hannah Rakowska and Maya Acosta, and I could go on and on, okay? But um, this is very exciting for me because A, it's my first Instagram live, so I'm like a little kid about this, but B, it's because you're much younger than I am. Next week I turn 65 and I want to reach your community because you see it was around the age of 40 that I started showing certain symptoms but kept getting poo-pooed because it must be a woman's sort of, oh, pre-menopausal, pre pre perimenopausal, whatever name you want to give it. And that's partly why I'm so charged up to be doing this with you to, today is to reach the younger women because you're in for a rough ride if um, you don't pay attention now. And definitely. It's, it's just so important to me. So basically, um, my journey began. Um, you got, got a little time? No. I'm <laughs> <laughs> the basics is that um, I was always an animal lover and I began this journey as an ethical vegan and but not quite yet vegan at the time animal lover but then um, in I think it was 86 or 87 that John Robbins wrote diet for a new America and I read it and there was a a beautiful cat by the name of Honey Bunny living with me. And I'm really nerdy about my cat's names, okay? So for 45 years, I've been rescuing cats from the street, feral cats. So um, Honey Bunny was with me. And a friend of mine gifted me this book. And I wish she would have read it because of her own personal um, health outcomes. But anyhow, I read it. And, and what I can recall... Um, was that I came out of my room after I read it and I took one look at Honey Bunny and I said, oh no, I can't eat meat, flesh any longer. I just can't. So it was immediate, immediate. And it was quite a big deal for me being brought up, you know, American Italian with the food and all that. And um, so I went first vegetarian. And then around 90 or 91 began my vegan journey. I can't tell you exactly my vegan anniversary. I'm a bad vegan that way. A lot of people know it. I don't know it. <laughs> I don't and I'm going to tell you, I want to be forthcoming with your audience. One of my chronic issues since I'm four years old is indeed insomnia. And because of that, it affected my memory mm. over the years. 
and medications that I was put on back in 91 affected my memory. So if I have to refer to my GP, <laughs> <laughs> it's there, all right? So um, anyhow, that, that was the beginning of it. And I have to say that I was immediately drawn to the Roth vegan approach. So for about five years, I was 100% raw. The issue for me with raw, 100% raw, was that it was very heavy because it was a lot of it back then was gourmet raw, which means lots of fat, heavy on the nuts and seeds, heavy on the dried fruit. And I later found out for me that that stuff was crack. It's just crack okay. for me. For me, all right? And I, I wound up with some food addiction issues. I put myself into a rehab back in 92, and that was a kundalini yoga-based rehab. So the doctors and the nurses were indeed yoga Sikhs, and they kicked our butts two to three times a day with kundalini yoga. But I also learned about massage therapy back then, and I learned about yoga therapy and these influenced my choices later in life now i've later come to understand from dr jen hawk that we have we are to expect multiple relapses with recovery so i'm going to say it happened three times over my the course of my life so it was insomnia from childhood then we went into definitely food addiction anorexia bulimorexia they called it back then when you abused exercise uh purging binging pur i i did it all um and any time in my life when i was presented with sort of like a dramatic event and who isn't who who isn't right i returned to vegetarian and guess what was my little enemy cheese cheese the total, right, there is that pleasure trap food. You have your oil, your salt, your sugar. Oh, gosh, that's just fantastic. So it, there would be those fine times, and I'd come out of it, and then I had another second round of five years of raw vegan, and then more trauma. So that was the way that went for a bit. But I will say that the major diagnoses that went on with me occurred in 92 when I was diagnosed as manic depressive. And that's back when, I don't know if you know the actress Patty Duke, but she made this diagnosis kind of famous and the medication lithium. Mm -hmm. And I was on lithium for two years, but that lithium caught up with me 28 years later and I'll explain in a moment. So um, I was on psychotropic drugs for the next 25 to 28 years on every type you could imagine. And I got to the point where back in 2016, I had gone back to school at 57 years old for massage therapy. I went to a phenomenal private massage school and I started hearing voices. And so a friend of mine in school said, you might want to check out those meds you're on. Looked them up and saw a whole bunch of nasty side effects. I did something I don't tell anybody to do, but I weaned myself off for the next two and a half years. It was brutal because I was addicted to the stuff, but I did it. And I don't recommend it. I'm telling you folks, it's nasty. Don't just go ahead and wean yourself. So... In 2017, I started getting really nasty symptoms and really nasty pain in my lower right, the lower left quadrant of my abdomen. And I, I was like, listen, I'm graduating and I'm getting my license. I don't care what I'm doing. And I was dropping to the floor in pain, like in public. I would, be, I would just be down. I, got, I graduated school in 2017. I got the license, massage therapy license in 2017. Finally went to the doctor. And in one fell swoop, I got diagnosed with the osteoporosis of a 90-year-old, subclinical hypothyroid, um, seven masses in my body. I had um, two thyroid nodules, one really super enlarged lymph gland, 
And then I also had two cysts on my left ovary, the size of a grapefruit, one on the right ovary, the size of a small orange, a tumor in my liver, the list goes on, right? I had the worst vegan blood work, low B12, low um, vitamin D3, low protein, low calcium, but super high homocysteine. And I actually went to a biochemist who created certain blood work that I went to the same biochemist that Chris Wark went to, and he was Dr. Emil Chandel, because my blood work also showed, I want to put it this way, two and a half, two and a half high cancer markers. They couldn't figure out the third, so I'll call it two and a half. And when I went to Dr. Chandel, we did the blood work, and by then, my diet was getting much more back on track. And he came out with, he did blood and urine analysis analysis of me and then showed me a chart and said, you're at 90 years old with your bone density. Now I was a trainer. I've been a personal trainer since I'm 30, but the older one gets, if you resort to vegan or vegetarian junk food, it's going to somehow catch up and play itself out. So as, as soon as I got all of these diagnoses and, and he said what he said to me, I said, I know what I have to do. Because at that point, I had gone back to working out. I had gained, I want to say, 42 pounds. But by then, when I saw Dr. Shondell, I probably had lost 30. And when he told me about the osteoporosis, I said, I know what I have to do. I need some time. And I knew I had to go back to weight lifting. I was using the rebounder, which we know is good for the bones, but not as great as what NASA thought back in 1980 when they did the original tests. You really also, in conjunction with the rebounding, need to do resistance work. I don't care if it's bands, tubing, weights, the body resistance, whatever it is. And that's what I did. And so what happened was um, I, for three years, it took three years, but I went from the osteoporosis of a 90-year-old to age-appropriate osteopenia. And I say it to you this way because people need to understand, women need to understand, especially in today's day and age, where certain men Medical practitioners are breathing down our necks because of osteopenia, scaring people. Let's start the medications now. Don't, you know, why wait for it to happen? But osteoporosis is a pathology and osteopenia is not. So um, what I did was included with the strength training, I ate and still eat because I can become osteoporotic again if I'm not careful. So I eat so many greens. I mean, pounds of lettuces and every kind you could imagine. I don't suggest that for people who are in blood thinners, by the way. There's a way that they can negotiate that with their medical practitioner. Um, but that's what I did. I, I beefed up the weightlifting. And um, I also did take, and still do, take supplemental minerals and um we need to understand that osteopenia is the natural byproduct for men and women when we age because the body naturally decreases estrogen this is how i see it and i talked about this one time with dr frank sabatino and he said you might have something to do this and i said i think that it's it's nature's way of protecting us to decrease the estrogen because it makes later in life cancers less possible. So there's a protective factor. Now, I'm not saying that if you get diagnosed with osteopenia, like a profound case or something, that you should just be cocky about it. No, it's what drives me. It's what drives me 
need to lift weights five to six times a week to be on that rebounder five to six times a week. I, I rebound and I, again, not going to suggest it to others until you know your medical situation, especially if you have osteoporosis. But when I rebound, I wear a two pound weighted vest. But when I walk on, I do fitness walking also out on Miami Beach, on the beach. I'm so lucky it's two blocks away. And I wear a 12 and a half pound weighted vest. I tell people, don't put it on unless you know what's going on with your bones. Because rebounding, weighted vest could create what's called wedge fractures, like these small compression fractures in the spine. I was cleared. I don't know about somebody else. I'm telling you my anecdotal experience of what downgraded, because the medical community doesn't like to say reverse, so I, I'm willing to say downgraded to age-appropriate osteopenia. But it also, because this, this lifestyle is not reductionist. If I go to with the intent of helping the osteoporosis, guess what else benefited? Well, all my blood work is not only normal, it's like super normal. And even with my, even though I have a, a, a tumor in my liver, which means a hemangioma is like, kind of like a bundle of blood vessels. So your form is peculiar, but the function, my liver enzymes, phenomenal. So it's not like, I like, okay, I wish it looked nicer, but I don't care because it's doing its job the way it needs to. The D3, the B12, protein, calcium, homocysteine, all, all normal. Um, I also had, I neglected to tell you, endometrial hyperplasia, which is a very like thick uterine lining. It's one of, not the only one, but one of the points of that could turn into uterine cancer. And I, in fact, had Sylvester Cancer Hospital down here call me every day for two weeks, five to six times a day, talking to me about, you know, get an operation, have a hysterectomy. And I'm like, give me a little time, give me a little time. And my endocrinologist, maybe we have to put you on um, hypothyroid medication. Mm, give me a little time. So I'm no, lo no longer subclinical hypothyroid, no longer endometrial hyperplasia. I, uh, I, I, I embrace many modalities, one of which is, was a water fast with Dr. Frank Sabatino. I did a 10-day water fast, which is like a 16-day experience with the juicing beforehand and then the refeed. And you well know this, right? Coming from True North, of course. And, um, but what I did was one week to the day that I came home from that water fast, and it was just before the pandemic, just before. And one week to the day, they told me, well, endometrial gone. Um, the cyst on the right ovary was once told me prior to the water fast that it was gone. But then the next time they saw me, they're like, oops, made a mistake. It was hiding behind fecal matter. Mm -hmm. I'm like, give, give, me, give me a break. But this last, this, this last time that I had gone for it, they said, no, that's out of here. Now, um, which is very exciting, and all the blood work, like I said, totally normal. I don't know about the other masses because I haven't gotten scanned since because I got my livelihood got affected by the pandemic. So, but I have to tell you that since August of 2020, pain free. That's so amazing. it's possible they're gone, and I do lots of stuff for my lymphatics, you know. So that's kind of all of it in, in a nutshell, you know, compact. Thank yeah. you for that. No, that's just wonderful, you know, and just to hear like how you hyper nourished your body, you really honed in, right? You took it seriously. 
I love it. Like, I absolutely love to hear this. Like, that's just so wonderful. And I think, you know, when anybody gets a scary diagnosis like that, like you got, osteo you know, you have, you had a lot, quite a few scary diagnoses, but just keeping it to the uh, 90 year old osteoporosis when you're nowhere near that age, right? And then you were able to reverse that in three years to age related osteopenia through hyper nourishing on a plant based diet and exercise routine. Like, that's just incredible. So I'd love to talk about a little bit if you don't mind what it is that like you kind of currently eat day to day now, like what's a typical day look like for you as preventative? Okay. Like what are you doing yeah. every day? This lunch and dinner, let's hear it. And it, it <laughs> it's, it's beautiful how you put it because I always think from a preventive perspective, always. Yeah. That's what drives me. All right. Um, so I, I eat unbelievably simply. I don't like, I don't own an <laughs> oven. I don't own an oven. Oh, I, oh, I, I own an oven. I know. I I know you do recipes, right? They're beautiful. I don't oh. own a microwave. So what it is, is that um, I eat and it's 80, I'm 80% 80 raw and 20% cooked. And to be honest, the cooked, all it is, is I take my organic frozen veggies and thaw them out, wash them off, and that's it. And that's the cooked part. So it's a lot of fruit. It's a lot of vegetables, raw vegetables, all kinds, and lots of different greens, like the uh, spring mixes and the power greens, and just all put together. And when I eat fruit, with the exception, now I know some people are okay with eating uh, greens with melon. I'm a little bit hippie because I come from those days of the food combining where it was just drilled in our heads, yeah. don't eat greens with melon. But I know it's bull now but but the thing is it's still that way with me but otherwise if i have pineapple i have my greens in there my celery in there my sprouts in there it's very rarely that it's going to be by itself the fruit okay. um i love i i'm not a big i i to be honest i love the taste of potatoes but they don't agree with me they just don't so i don't do potatoes but i do grains i'll eat organic corn um i'll eat organic grains like quinoa, um, a little millet, brown rice. And um, do you cook these or do you, um, do you sprout them first and cook them? Like I, I, I buy them sprouted or if I, or I buy them frozen. I'm really like, I, my, my protocol is intense. I'm at it at least four to seven hours a day on my physical self mm -hmm. and because I don't want this again. I don't want any of these diagnoses. I don't want any ability for masses to continue to grow in me. I want them, I want them preferably gone. If they need to hang peacefully, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I don't, I don't want to come at it. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to come at it from a negative place. I yeah. just, all right, I did this, so I got to deal with it, and I'm taking care of you kind of thing. And um, so... I, that's how I approach my life. I don't have time to cook, prepare. I'm just chopping and eating. So and do you um, do you have a smoothie recipe that you make, or do you pretty much I, just cut it up? I and used to. I oh. used to because I was also diagnosed with a tortious um, sigmoid colon, mm -hmm. and so what what it was was that the two cysts on the left ovary were touching upon the sigmoid colon, if I had to defecate, it was, oh, oh no, stand on the commode to try to go without screaming in pain, all right? So that's all gone, all right? But because of that tortious sigmoid colon, at the time, I, I wasn't doing many salads. I was doing smoothies instead to get all those greens. Yeah. So now, I don't do the smoothies. I totally enjoy my salads. But I can share with you the stuff that I used to put in my smoothies. I'm very much influenced by the quantity of green that goes in there is influenced by Dr. Brooke Goldner. So she talks about take your greens and use your elbow and <laughs> shove them in there. And that's basically like what I used to do. 75 or 80% greens, isn't it? It's 
unbelievable with a little, maybe a little fruit just to sweeten the face. Right, exactly. So it's just get those greens in there. Well, wait, I'm, I'm a little bit worse than she is with that, or I should say bigger. I would, I would actually fill up a whole Vitamix, have about eight to 10 ounces of water and blend. Then I would add my uh, organic wild blueberries. Okay. Okay. But I also had in there carrot because I, I had some eye issues with posterior vitreous detachment. Mm -hmm. But that is something I also later learned could possibly have been um, associated with one of the medications I was on. Yeah. So I, uh, I put carrot, I put celery in there, uh, sprouts that I would buy, um, uh, lots of different greens, what else? And then I would put a uh, flax seed or, um, you know, another type of seed, like hemp seed, whatever, I would throw them in. Um, and I would also do some, I would put some of the supplements in there for the minerals, but I would also do like amalaki amla. Mm -hmm. And all, oh, look at what Carlos, thank you. <laughs> Um, and I, um, I would put in amla, I would put in, um, moringa powder. Oh. Um, yeah. So I, I, I would also do like, cause I really not a fan of eating mushrooms. They just, uh, they don't turn me on, but I, but I love what they do. So yeah. I, like a, a, yeah, like a fermented mushroom powder I would put in there. And, and I would also put a fermented beet powder. All, all, all organic, you know, all like I sourced, make sure I did my third party sourcing, all that stuff. Wonderful. Oh, oh that's a beautiful, I mean, that's a beautiful smoothie. But oh. That's just cool to hear. And I think, I think it's a good message to give across that, you know, it doesn't have to be complicated. It can be super simple to eat this way, to be able to, you know, treat whatever it is you're trying to treat or to feel as good as you want to feel, right? And I think sometimes the simpler, the better, because it takes the, um, you know, the confusion or, I don't know, maybe the intenseness of trying to create some sort of elaborate meal, right? I'm sorry, it's a lot out there. Um, but yeah, no, it's just, so that's wonderful to hear. Like, I love the simplicity of it. And whenever I chat about how I eat too, it's the same way. It's as simple as I can make it to get the nutrients that I need and I feel good and I'm ready to go about my day. So yes. um, well, another question is um, for weightlifting, what do you recommend for women um, to like how many days a week do you recommend like lifting or doing some sort of like you said resistance training whether it's walking with weighted vests or it's using bands or it's using weights or even just a lot of body weight exercises so what how many days a week would you recommend for somebody oh, okay and it's probably uh, as well but say that again i didn't hear that last one oh i said i know it probably differs like obviously person to person depending on it what they're really doing. does it yeah really does because when I work with people, I'm dealing with their medical care practitioner as well, because I'm designing specific to that person, right? So, but in general, I will tell you what the whole food plant-based medical docs say, all right? And I'm obviously very influenced by Dr. Frank Sabatino. And <laughs> uh, so they all refer to the American College of Sports Medicine for the strength training component. And they also refer to the American Heart Association when it comes to the cardiovascular work, all right? So according to ACSM, they're talking about uh, a minimum of straight training twice a week. That's great, but if you're getting, if you have like a certain diagnosis, um, if you have a diagnosis, then if somebody has a diagnosis of osteoporosis, then you do need to check with your medical care practitioner. And I'm gonna tell you something, twice a week is not gonna cut it. Mm -hmm. it's just, yeah. Not, all right. I'm going to tell you, I would suggest no less than three. Yeah. But it's, again, it's based on anecdotal personal stuff because what I, what I do with like my, with my um, strength training is like maybe one day is upper body, next day is lower body. So this way I can keep doing it by giving that area of the body some rest. So we don't ever want to strength train the same body part on consecutive days. Right. Why yeah. have them? Because let me tell you, the, the downtime is imperative for the tissue to heal. Absolutely. We're creating, right, those little nano micro tears. Yeah. Right.
right. We got to give it some time to, then you have, then you go into hypertrophy if you give yourself a chance to recover and to rest and to watch what you're eating. That's the other thing, Dr. Stephanie. Eating this way is phenomenal for recovery. You know, at, I'm sorry, am I freezing up on you? No, no, no. My phone just froze up for one second. Oh, so I, okay. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't me. And yeah. so, um, uh, so when it comes to the strength training, no less than twice a week. But please, if anybody is suspicious of their bone issues, the first thing you do is you go get a proper diagnosis. Oh. And, th and then you're going to be able to be advised on how to go forward. And that's what I do across the board with everybody who's got this. It's like, I can't, there's a, there, there are exercise protocols that exist for osteoporosis. But the thing is, is I don't want to treat a human being as a demographic. Right. I have to treat you as a human within a demographic. Mm -hmm. And that's what's super important about how you go about training with people. When people go to work with me, they're like, man, you're tough because <laughs> it's a process. Yeah. Like, yeah. First, the first session, we're sitting there going over the client health history form. I do it all virtually. The next is, based on that session, do I need to have contact with the medical health care practitioner who knows your body best? Then I got to send off, and I always send off three questions. Any movements contraindicated for your patient that I need to be aware of? Any movements you suggest I do with your patient? And are there any movements contraindicated with your patient's medications? You have to have an answer to those questions before you can do anything. For those, for those people out there who are hearing about the way to vest, please don't put it on without knowing. And when I advise people on wearing a weighted vest to strength train, I will tell you that what you do is you first wear it without anything in it. Because these things are not nice linen and cotton. They're polyester. They're big time hot. So just getting used to the heat. Then if you buy one that don't buy a preset weighted vest because you can't clean it. They get really gross. Mm -hmm. And you, and you don't, want to min you don't want to limit yourself. You don't ever want to do more than 10% of your own body weight, which is why mine is at 12 and a half pounds. I'm typically between 118 and 20, 123. That's good enough me with the 12 and a half pounds. You don't, and that, that actually was also discussed with me by way of Dr. Lori Marvis. She asked a question for me, of Dr. Michael Clapper, because he's big on the weighted vest and he had said not more you know no 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 more don't go up to 13. Oh awesome I'm glad that you uh addressed that actually with the weighted vest. Oh, oh absolutely there's there's studies done and published by Harvard Health Publishing and they did a wonderful article about uh wear, wearable weights and they said when it comes to bone with you you want to have an effect on the bone right yeah wearing ankle weights and wearing wrist weights to go walking, zero, nothing. Wearing a weighted vest is what it's about. Wow, that's that's wonderful to hear and great advice. Thank you for sharing You're that. You're very welcome. That oh, is I'm like, awesome. This is like my passion. I know, yeah. I know. I, I, too and that's what's so like amazing talking with you about it because it's just wonderful that you're bringing this kind of information to light for so many people it's, and yeah it's wonderful so yeah and i think this is a good segue because you're talking about the questions that you'll you know have your patient your clients uh doctors answer and that you do virtual visits so please like tell everyone that's listening right now and that will listen later on like where they can find you well thank you and like, for that. I appreciate oh, yeah. it. And like any resources you have on your website or in where you're more active on, like with social media handles, like let everybody know so they can find this information. Well, thank you. First off, I would always advise people to go to my website to get introduced to my services. And, and if you're interested, then from there, you can write me by way of the contact form on the website. The website is boomerandbeyondwellness.com. I'll repeat it. It's boomerandbeyondwellness.com. And basically, that's my social media handle. So I'm mostly for social media on Facebook. I'm, I'm starting to get a wee bit more comfortable with Instagram. 
you <laughs> really do. And I thank you so much. This is great. And um, it's all Boomer and Beyond Wellness. But I'm very excited because only recently we published uh, uh, my new YouTube channel. Oh. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really thrilled. And on the channel is I, I tend to do like I, I really enjoy the podcast interviews. And most of the interviews, I'm presenting my work. So on these interviews, you'll be able to scroll to a total workout. So maybe it's upper body, lower body, total body. I'm weightlifting. I'm using bands and tubing. I'm, I'm using nothing because there are people who are just brand new to it. And I, I want them to have a safe and effective resource. Yeah. Yeah. You know, exactly. And um, also, I'm very much, uh, we, I take into great consideration people who are wheelchair bound people who are bedridden. So you're going to see on there chair yoga, chair exercise. It's important. And it doesn't mean because there are limitations that you, well, I can't do anything. No, no, no. I tell people, you watch my videos first, preview first. Just see, but look for what you can do. We're really good about knowing what we can't do when we have issues. But look for what you can do. And little by little, you can actually create your own exercise protocol. So all of these videos are on the platform there because I want people to have free content. It's no joke out there trying to exercise with a trainer and all that. But there is material there. And one of the things you'll see that I do a lot, Dr. Stephanie, is if I'm teaching something, and I'll say, now, those of you with back spine issues or those of you with hypertension, vertigo, GERD, don't drop your head back. Don't drop your head all the way down. Here's your position for the exercise. So I show these different modifications because I want people to do the work. I don't want them walking away going, well, they don't do any me. Exactly. And my profession is really great about kicking my age group and, and older to the curb. Well, I'm here to tell you, I'm here to re rectify that. That is my mission. We can all do this. Do you know what it's like for me? I, I, I'm going to share this with you. I'm a video provider uh, of, ex of strength training and yoga for a, a group called the Feel Fabulous Over 40. And it's helping people transition from the sad to the whole food plant-based diet. But these people have a lot of medical issues, and many are my age and older. Do you know what it's like to watch them lift weights with me once a month on Zoom? And I'm looking at people who are lying down on their backs on their bed, lifting weights, people sitting in a wheelchair, people who had a stroke and could only work unilaterally. This at people on an, wearing an oxygen mask attached to a portable tank and they're getting their weights and they're and i'm just like come on i'll get chills now I'm telling you that uh, is so fulfilling and i just got another platform doing the same with me this is timory hagenberger she's the nutrition professor and her group is called the foodie bar way of life basically the same concept and i'm providing them now with videos for their platform and i got presented with this work at this late stage of my life and it couldn't be any more perfect amazing it's amazing i'm so oh, that's grateful wonderful. that's so wonderful to hear so with your youtube channel you're uploading those videos you'll be uploading videos that are kind of for anybody at any stage of like the process yes. of trying to incorporate some sort of workout routine that's right that is just wonderful right. so that and, that and is that also called boomer and beyond wellness that's yes also all of it and i'm also with, with yeah so with uh facebook and instagram it's also boomer and beyond wellness. you're not gonna go wrong you'll find me somewhere with that <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's only angela well angela this was wonderful i'm so thank you so much for sharing all this amazing knowledge and content that you have and i'm seriously this is just i love the mission that you're doing and the word that you're spreading about exercise and nutrition you can do it you can do it at any stage of the game it doesn't matter how old or young you are i think it's really wonderful and for anyone who's just now joining or joining later it's boomer and beyond wellness.com for the website and then for her facebook instagram and youtube channel i can't wait to check out your videos that's amazing <laughs> thank you so much i so appreciate you what you're doing for our community and what you just did for me here today thank you so much dr stephanie
Oh, you are welcome, Angela. Thanks for joining and thanks everyone else for joining. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>